hey guys welcome back to my channel thank you so much for clicking a couple of years ago i have done videos about the matatu culture in kenya well today i have come to meet a man who has a big name in kenya especially in the matatu industry he is one of the people who do the graffiti on most matatus in kenya and he fixes cars as well you know what let's just meet him let's talk to him let's hear how he likes to be referred to okay so come with me Working. Hello. Hi. Hi. Nice to finally meet you. Guys, this, this is a legend. This guy is a legend. I'm so happy to meet you. You're welcome. You can come to your car. Doing the paint and the graffiti, that can cost like 250 I'm wow. the one who started the graffiti thing. Yo, guys, I told you this guy is a legend. What? I like supporting everyone who wants to do something about this thing what we are doing. Because it's something which came from my heart and I'm always ready to give it out to other people to know and to see what we do. Okay. Yeah. So how long have you been doing this? Uh, I've been doing this I think like over 20, 23 years. 23 years. For those who don't know you, who is Moha Graphics? Moha Graphics is a guy who loves cars. Mm -hmm. who does everything about cars. Okay, I started this thing of Matatu Graffiti. At that time when I started... Sorry, yeah. you started this thing? Yes, I'm wow. the one who started the graffiti thing. Yo, guys, I told you this guy is a legend. What? Uh -huh, tell us is more. It? At that time when I started this... Okay, I started doing art on Matatu. Uh -huh. At that time, people were not doing graffiti. They were all just lines, logos, names. Boring stuff. Boring stuff. Yeah. But for me, being creative, mm -hmm. I wanted to bring something different. I mm -hmm. And I was, at those days, I was constantly on the internet. That, that time, internet was really hard to get. So I, I used to go to cyber cafes at night to see what the other people outside the world, what people are doing about art. Oh, wow. So I found I found this graffiti thing very exciting to me and I decided I was going to bring this thing to what I do. At that time, okay, I, I was not like creating a new thing. I was trying to do something different for myself because for me, normal is always boring. I wanted to do something which no one is doing here. So when I started the first car, People were like, I, this thing is not normal. So the first guy I did, everyone disliked it because it, it was something very different. So even that matat was, it was cancelled, the, the, the owner just uh, sprayed the car. Are you serious? Yeah. That must have been so heartbreaking. I cried like a baby. Oh. That day I went to the workshop. Now that was my one of my first big matatus I did. Mm -hmm. So I went to the workshop, let's say, like a week after I did it. So I was just going there to take my my balance it was like nine thousand so i went there i was looking for the the bus the matatu was not there when i looked on one side it i saw the bus but it was resprayed and just done some stupid design on it so you had worked so hard and put your creativity i was working day and night on that matatu because it was like the first thing i'm doing it was something i really want to show my skill but no one liked it. But the other designers who were there, they were like envious. They were jealous of what I did because they were shocked. What I was Where doing, exactly the, what I was doing, they have never seen before, but I never gave up. Oh, wow. It really put me down. But now I only thought of maybe doing it differently. So I started, started doing a bit differently before people started to, uh, liking it and I thank God so much after I did it like that after maybe 10 15 matatus I did it was now the in thing everyone wanted that thing it was like something trending we want this moha there's a time mm -hmm. people used to bring cars and book them like they bring a car today they or oh, they come and pay me they pay me in advance they tell me moha 
your, uh, I'm going to bring a car after two months and they pay me up front oh, wow. because they wanted what I was doing. Okay. And that was the first time I was featured on uh, live TV. That was, was on news. Uh, it was the news, I think, for seven. Mm -hmm. That day it was like the biggest thing which had happened to my life. I lost my parents when I was very young. Oh. My society, my friends, they never looked at me at any time because I was just a poor young boy who people did I was not I was not even able to buy shoes for myself. Oh really? So you're yeah. walking backwards? No, I was just wearing the same shoe like every single day. In Nairobi. So you grew yes. up in Nairobi? I was born in Nairobi. I was uh, living in Isili. Yeah? You see and that time how people rejected me, I really worked so hard. Not to prove to them, but to prove to myself wow. that I can do something which I love. And at that time I never thought that and that time what the what I was doing, I was just doing it so that I could I was just doing it just like for the pleasure because I didn't have a family, I didn't have anyone depending on me, only my sisters. So the only thing I was just doing just to get my daily bread maybe buy myself maybe a t-shirt, looking nice, maybe make my hair. That time I had hair. Yes. <laughs> okay, um, from being rejected to, to where you are right now, which which is the one matatu or the one thing that you did that blew your mind and changed everything? There's a Nissan which I did, it was called Ganja Farm. That was the first Nissan with the big rear tires and the one which is uh, the first one to be lifted. And that changed the whole... Uh, game mm -hmm. because from that time now people started looking for me who did this matter then I did the next one it became better than the first one you see always the first one is like the main the child thing. now uh, you're yes. improving I was improving like on each car I was doing my level best oh, I wow. never wanted to do even till now mm -hmm. any car I'll do today the one I'll do tomorrow it will be better be, better than, than the one I did today. That's so that amazing. that's what I set my mind, and I, that is what I always teach my students and my workers. What you do today should be tomorrow should be better than today. Yeah, you that's see? amazing. Yeah, that's what has brought me till here. Okay. Um, guys, you don't understand. You said the, the matatu was called what? Ganja farm. Do you know how you're making students and people in Nairobi go crazy? Like, we'd be at the stage, you're like, we are waiting for ganja farm. We are not going anywhere <laughs> until people, it comes. You at know? that time, if that matatu passes you, and maybe you're from school, you'll stay at the <laughs> stage till it goes to <laughs> Sili, then come back. back. And if you crazy. still don't get a seat, you'll wait, Again. Uh, wait until you board it. So the matato culture is a huge thing. It's always been a huge thing in case you don't know it. Um, so now you've come to this point, you have employees. Did you ever dream that you'll actually ever get to a point like this where you have your own business? Okay. It was like a joke because when I started my own, okay, I didn't even set my own garage. There's a time a client called me from Embakasi. He called me, Moha, I want to bring you my car for design but can you take me to someone who can do the body work for me? I told him, yes, I have a guy. The guy was me. <laughs> so I took the van from his place, brought it home. Then I looked for a guy who would do the body work. Then another guy who would do the paint. Then me, I do the graffiti. So after I did that first one, it was like a joke. I just, it was like over the phone. Moha, uh, I want to bring my car. He showed me a good uh, uh, body work guy. So he, he didn't even know that is where I live. Yeah. Because we were working outside, like on the roadside at home. So after I took the first run, I did it. It became good, but I was negative 3,000. I, I went a loss of 3,000 because I didn't know how to charge for the whole services. So slowly people called me, okay, after I did that one, I said like a whole man with no job. But when I started getting another one, I brought it home, did the same. And this time I did go that, uh, I didn't have a big loss, I just made a loss of 1,000. After that, I started making like 2,000 and all. Then slowly, slowly, my, where I used to live, my tattoo start, started flowing. You know, wow. the neighbors become, the neighbors become, they started becoming angry with me because of the tattoo, the guys, you know, my tattoo guys are a bit rough and all that. So I had to look for a garage. After I looked for a garage, and that time when I started paying my first rent, I was like, oh, I'm paying rent. 
there was a time I could not even pay my own credit for the phone. Wow. Because at that time, uh, the, the cheapest credit was 250 wow. shillings. And the SIM card is 2,500 at that time. But when I started paying rent, then I started employing like three guys, four guys. There's a time before the government brought this, uh, this rule and all, I had 47 workers. Oh, wow. 47 That's workers. Crazy. I had like 10 for body work, 10 for paint, 15 students, 10 for uh, graffiti. That's amazing. So you're creating employment in our country. And let me tell you, since I started till now, mm -hmm. I don't have the same workers. Mm -hmm. I, they keep on uh, graduating, going to their own places. I have guys who have gone to Tanzania, Uganda to work through my hands. That's amazing. You see, like now I have five students at the moment. Mm -hmm. I have like 12 workers. And when they become good, I always give them the free will. You want to stay, you want to leave, you want to go start your own thing. I always give them the chance because I was ne never given the chance. People always rejected me. When I used to go to some garages, I wanted to do something. They're like, ah, no, no, no. You don't look like you can, you can do any work. Because I look like that soft guy, a uh, lover boy or something at that time. You see, so people are like, I, this guy cannot work. But I thank God because Allah gave me the chance to learn everything. And now, now it's my time to give it out to the young people. I always want to be the people, boys to become better than me, know better things than me. I want, after five, 10 years, I'm sitting somewhere, I'm seeing all my titles done by students who came from Mohan. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, so you're talking about how you went on losses for like 3,000 because you didn't know how to charge. So now you know how to charge? Yes. Okay, you learn through your own mistakes and even experience gives you more knowledge about every kind of job. At the moment now I do all cars, I do matatus, I do modification, I have big projects I'm doing. But it's not all about matatu, I do everything. Because I ventured to all kind of motor vehicles. Oh, wow. Motorbikes, even bicycles, even toys I do. I don't neglect any kind of job. I do portraits, I do photography, I do like everything which comes my way, which needs creativity. Okay, so is it true that to to work on one Ganya, to pimp it, do the graffiti on it, you can make a million shillings? No, that's a lie. Let me tell you, pimping a matatu, a big matatu, what all what is entailed for it to become a, a, a manyanga, it can take even like two million. What? But for us who are doing it, I won't lie to you because there are like I think hundred people working on one matatu. Because oh. there's a music guy, okay. wiring guy, lighting guy, paint guy, graffiti guy, uh, tint seats, interior. You see, like ten so tint, much, so much. So all those people. They have their portion. But for me, doing the paint and the graffiti, that can cost like 250000 Now, after me buying material and everything, I can make like 50000 40000 on that van. Let's say if I take the music part too, maybe the owner gives me uh, for me to install the music. So the music, we can buy the music for like 300000 400000 I get a guy who will do it for me. I, I pay him like 40000 Maybe I charge the owner like 60, so I make like 20 there. Then if I look for a guy who does the lighting, he charges like 30,000. I may charge like 35, I get like 5,000. You see, just we make small, small things on small things, and sometimes you don't even make. You just introduce the owner to the guy who does it, for him to be charged separately. But saying that we make 1 million from a van or on a matatu, that's a lie, because if I did like that, I won't be still doing this job. Okay, it's my passion, but I think I'll be in bigger businesses. This is my passion. I'm trying to look for money. I'm trying to save up so that I can do other business so my kids won't go through the hardship I've gone through for the past 20 years. It's not easy having a garage. I don't sleep. I work Monday to Monday. Sometimes I don't have time for my kids, my family. Because I have to meet deadlines, I have to make sure my clients are happy. It's always like a service, the service I'm doing is 
more satisfying to me than to client. I have to satisfy my my passion and my soul so that I can give the best thing to you. Okay, that's amazing. Okay, um, I can't help but notice your teeth. What's what's up with your teeth? Okay, I love Singapore very much. I used to have like 10, 15 bracelets, chain. But now at that at that time, you know, I had young boys in my garage. So when I'm doing work, normally I remove them, put it on the drawer. So every day I was missing like one. <laughs> I miss a ring. So I thought because I love silver, let me do this. Instead of me wearing them, let me just put them in my mouth. I then I decided let me just put my all my teeth silver because one thing. I never wanted to look normal like other people. People used to put one just on the side. Yeah. I think even they still do it today. I decided let me just put it all up. The first Kenyan to do that. Wow. It, I think it was in 2002. At that time, I used to go to supermarket. People were like, <laughs> maybe I'm holding the commodity like this. That, that person is like picking the thing, looking at me. It's like, he's calling his friend. <laughs> you see? Is it expensive? At that time, it was expensive. Almost, it costed me almost like two hundred thousand. At that time, oh, wow. in two thousand and two. So you had that much money back. Then? No, okay. With me, let me tell you one thing. I won't lie to you. If I like something and I love something, I just do it for myself. I won't for, wait for someone else to do it for me because I I really desired things when I was young, but we were not well off. My father did not provide that for me. And maybe I didn't get the chance of getting it because they died when I was very young. You see, so the things which I love, I will, even if I don't have money, I'll look for that money, do that thing. Like today, someone just sent me a photo of a very nice helmet. I don't have money, but I'll just go pick it. Because if I love it, if I die tomorrow, I have to satisfy myself. If my kids want something, and I know it's rele relevant for them, oh, it is something they love. I'll always give them, but to a limit. Sometimes I tell them, if you pass, you'll get this. You see, like now this watch, my daughter wants it. Now she's in class eight. So I tell her, you pass, I'll give it to you with the phone. Me, I'll buy a small phone and just use it. You see, that's how I, I, I show them. You do something good so that you can be rewarded. In Islam, we always talk about being satisfied. For me, I'm alive, I'm healthy, I have healthy kids, I have a good family, I have good friends, you being one of them. I think that's more satisfying than having all the money in this world. And being satisfied, seriously, truly satisfied, is not all about money, it's all about being satisfied with what you have. Because the only three things I normally do, I always tell people about three major things you can do for your life. Pray, work hard, and pray. You see, those are the main things you can do. Because Allah, God says, when you wake up, go look for your halal earning. Then, the rest you leave it to me. Allah has given me the best what he wants. Not the best what I want. Because the best for him is the best for anyone. Wow. So last question. What advice can you give Kenyan youth or African youth who are hopeless, who don't know what to do, who may feel confused, they don't have money, they don't see a future, what can you tell them? The first thing, you're hopeless and all that, but no one thing. God is most gracious, the most merciful. God has given everyone a talent, even if it's running, jumping, it's, it's a talent. So the first thing you have to sit down, if you're a young person, just think of what I can do best, because there's something you can do best. Everyone has a talent. God never and has never given two people something and two people nothing. It's all about us. You see, like these big schools, Cambridge School, all these big schools, they always try and nurture talents from their kids. All their kids, they know these kids are singer, this is a, can they do basketball. So the main thing for those people who have don't, don't have hope and everything, they should acquire a skill. 
they should know what they can do best. And what they can do with their hands, with their mouth, with their brain, they should go for it and never listen to other people what they say about what they feel, about what they want to do. Because if I was listening to people who are saying, Moha, this is not the kind of job for a person like you, where would I be? Still being employed. Because at that time when you were young, you had to, you had to be employed to be successful, to wear a shirt and a tie. After I started my workshop, I don't have a shirt nor a tie because I don't believe in those things to be success. Success comes from what you can do. Never give up in life because God has given you life. That is the most precious thing. You have life, you have everything. Now make good use of your life. Look for what you can do best. You are a singer. Get the best talent. Get the best skills of singing. You are a, you, you want to, you are a seller. I cannot even sell this less. I don't know how to sell. But there's someone who can sell even for you a broken TV. He'll tell you, now this TV, my brother, this TV, you can just put it there. It will be a mirror. You see? Yeah, he'll sell it. So those are talents. So people, when they say they are hopeless, is they don't believe. There are two things about God. Belief and knowing. Everyone knows God is there. Very few people believe He's there. Knowing is just knowing. Believing is the biggest thing. I believe that God has a purpose for me. And the moment you believe that, everything comes easy. And then when it comes easy, your life becomes easy. Money does not make life easy. What you have in your heart and what you perceive about people and yourself is when your life becomes easy. I'll say it. Wow, that is very well said. Guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Drop a comment. Let me know what do you think about Moha graphics. And my hair. <laughs> so how can people reach you? Uh, on my YouTube channel, I have a Moha graphics YouTube channel, a small YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And uh, Instagram, Facebook, and WhatsApp. <laughs> okay. You can get me on those all social media. You can see what I do. And anytime my number is there, anytime you need to call, just call me. I'll pick up your phone anytime. Also, uh, hey guys, so here I am with someone who works with Moha. Hi. Hi. Okay. My name is Leshan. I'm the digital strategist and I handle everything that goes up on social media for Moha Graphics and his digital presence. Okay. Um, how is he talking with a legend like Moha? <laughs> Growing up, I never thought that I would uh, I would come to work with more graphics, but you know, I gravitated towards it, and uh, now I'm here, and I really like enjoy it because he's really a nice guy, and he's really easy to work with. You know, basically he makes my work easier. I just advise him what goes on social media, what time, what interviews to take, and stuff like that, and it's easy peasy. That's dope. Yeah. So, what is the best thing about this job, or what is the biggest lesson you have learned? The biggest, the biggest uh, advantage of working here is like I can really like maximize my skill creatively, you know? Yeah, like because what I do is in the art, art space, you know? And what he does is in the art space. It's just that for me, it's digitally, you know? So I get to like project what I feel like should be visible to everyone else in like the videos and stuff. So I feel like it helps me like uh, improve my skill set, you know? So I think, yeah, that, that would be the best for me. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, he's explaining how he lost his hair. How yes. did you lose your hair? Now, I was at the airport. I was going to bo board a plane. Then, unfortunately, another plane just passed. <laughs> See, then it sc uh, scratched me here a bit. So funny I had how to tall lose. were you for that? You know, at that time I was 7'14. My height was 7'14. 7'14 is existing? <laughs> no. 8'7. <laughs> Yeah, I was very tall at that time. You know, I've become old, so old okay. people become short. Guys, there you have it. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Today, I have brought you a Kenyan legend. One of the biggest, did I say one? No, the biggest guy in the matatu industry in Kenya. The guy behind the dope matatus that you see in the streets of Nairobi. So I really hope you have enjoyed this content. If you have, drop a comment. Let me know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, bye.